Thanks again to everyone for joining us. Thanks in particular to our speaker, um, Andy Brown, who, as I'm sure you'll be aware, um, has um, written a fascinating book called The Tree Climbing Cure, which will be um, the focus for the presentation. Um, I've only just myself been able to dip into the into the book over the last couple of uh, couple of days, and uh, there's a lot of really fascinating, interesting material that I'm looking forward to reading in full um, in due course. Uh, and I know Andy's going to give us um, a really interesting overview of the content of the book uh, and um, issues arising from it. So, um, without further ado, Andy, unless you need any more introductions from me? No, I don't. that's great. Thank you very much, Neil. Thank you for having me, and thank you, people, for making the time to come and listen. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, it's going to be a a, a mostly um, uh, audio. I mean, not audio, a visual talk, um, and say from the beginning. Is that looking good, Neil? I've got you. Yeah, can um, can somebody just sort of confirm in the Q and A panel that the screen share is working for them? That would be good. Okay. I think we're all okay. Okay, great. Um, so um, this uh, this book, the uh, uh, the tree climbing cures, recently um, uh, come out with um, Bloomsbury, and um, I'm going to begin. Um, where uh, where the whole research project began really, which is with this chap, Codley Miller, um, up a uh, up a, um, a, a an eighty foot sequoia tree in downtown Seattle uh, in twenty sixteen, uh, in uh, outside a well known department store called Macy's. He was suffering um, uh, a, um, a particularly serious schizophrenic episode. He climbed the tree. He stayed up there for twenty five hours. Um, and uh, it caused a Twitter storm and a, and a social media storm, hashtag man in tree, which is what I wanted to call the book, but I wasn't allowed to. Um, but um, uh, hashtag man in tree was the, was the Twitter and Facebook storm that went around this. Um, and the, 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 the commentary was basically derisory. It was the, man, the man's a lunatic, uh, he's unhinged, he's unstable, he's causing damage to buildings and property and passers by. It caused a real hoo-ha in debates about the provision of mental health care in the, in the US, um, which fascinated me. Um, um, but it, um, it picks up on a, um, on a, on a theme that uh, is, is um, prevalent in, um, in tree climbing literature, um, which is that um, Tree climbing is not for sane people. Tree climbing, the general idea goes, is, is the preserve of children or people like Cody Lee Miller who are deranged in some way um, uh, or making some kind of protest or doing, doing something out of the ordinary. It's just not what, quote, sane people do. Um, and um, this rather sort of derisory attitude, I, th I think it's very negative and wrong um, but it made me start thinking about all the characters in, that I knew in poems and, and stories and films and in paintings uh, who were up trees um, and what being up the tree has to say about, about them, about our attitudes to nature and ourselves and to well-being and, and so forth. So he hence, that's why this book has got a kind of a well-being um, angle attached to it. So I'm going to just concentrate on showing you some of the images which are to do with um, uh, uh, from the book, which I which I talk about a little bit. Um, and um, this is a painting by uh, uh, Anglo-American artist called Marcus Vergette. And uh, as I said in my little uh, prelim there, um, this is a this is a, a, a painting about tree climbing and children. Um, it's called Swinging uh, on Birches, and it captures um, a response to a poem by Robert Frost, the great American poet, called Birches, in which he described how American children uh, would go out, they'd find a particularly whippy, bendy tree, they'd grab hold of it on one side and, and swing it and let, them, let it flip them up and over. Um, it's a way of um, leaving the earth for momentarily and letting your feet being taken off the ground and sort of flung through the air by the green force of nature. Um, and uh, I love this, uh, uh, Frost's poem begins, uh, when I see birches bend to left and right, 
across a line of darker straighter trees I like to think some boy's been swinging them and it goes on into a long sort of philosophical um, um, uh, discussion um, but I love um, Verget's um, response to this the kind of childlike carefree abandon of it it's it's painted in what they call um, a la prima which means first attempt so it's painted in oils it's not over painted or corrected it's sort of as the it's as the um, as the painter it did it and intended in the moment, um, and I I think that's really appropriate for the subject matter because sub um, tree climbing is also a kind of form of sort of improvisatory creative practice. Um, I like I like the palette of the of the painting. Um, Frost poem is set in winter, and there's certainly little sort of wintry bits of white around in here, um, but there are also leaves on the tree, so it's a bit ambiguous when Vergette's is. Um, but Frost poem also talks about um, the boy's father's trees. These are the kind of, and in the painting, these are the big trees in the background. They're the sort of trees of authority, of, of adult sensibility, of, of adult correct behavior. Uh, and the whippier younger trees in front are the, are the childlike trees, the ones that allow us to reconnect to that child, childlike sense of adventure and energy and um, feel ourselves through the air. Uh, this is quite a famous painting um, by um, Francisco Goya, um, great Spanish painter you will all know, of course. And um, uh, uh, boys climbing a, uh, a tree. So I'm just looking for my page in the, in the book, just to, so I have my prompts with me. Um, and um, ch children love climbing trees, obviously. Um, if you do it on your own, there's a delicious sense of solitude that you get. Um, uh, and a and sense of solitude that helps you to um, broaden your imagination and start to indulge in fantasy play and imagine yourself as an animal um, or, or, as, or as someone or something else. Um, there's risks involved in climbing a tree and there's satisfaction in um, planning your way up, overcoming difficulties, um, achieving it. And then, of course, there's also the, 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 the matter of climbing back down again. Um, so children climb trees for, for lots of reasons, some of those. Um, and I think these boys here represent some of this. Um, one of the things that I really like in this painting is the bright optimistic colors, the blousy leaves and so on. Um, but in the background, um, on the left hand side, we have um, the mountains. On the right hand side, we have the, the sort of imposing edifice of adult authority. We have the, we have the big um, uh, castle there. Uh, the, the place of government, governance, the place where rules are made. Um, and the thing that I love about this painting is that the, um, is that the boys are for the moment allowed to be boys. They're not worried about the adult world of rule and restriction, which is, which is symbolized by that castle. They're not worried about things that they may become, um, farmers or goat hands or mountaineers even perhaps. Um, they are simply involved in the moment in this process of climbing the tree. And I think in all tree climbing um, uh, stories that I've come across, that sort of sense of being in the moment and, and being in the zone and of everything else falling away is very, very prevalent in, in, um, in real tree climbing activity, but also in the way it's represented in literature. Um, interestingly, the boy at the bottom here, um, has torn bridges and, and um, critics also talk about him having alopecia. He has some ball patches on his head. These, these boys are, um, are obviously um, uh, living in some kind of rural poverty. And um, this, uh, this climb is a way of escaping um, that reality of getting away from whatever it is that keeps them um, in bridges and shoeless um, at home. Moving on to a, another um, Spanish painter, um, I was delighted to come across this, um, Jose Maria Serdi Badia. Um, this is a, um, uh, a panel painted in 1932, uh, just uh, four years before the Spanish Civil War broke out. Serdi uh, Badia um, had trained in, um, in um, Renaissance fresco painting, he also um, worked, um, he was the son of an affluent uh, textile owner. And I think that sort of sense of textile is really prevalent in this painting. Um, 
and uh, in contrast to the tree, which is totally bare, which we'll which we'll get to um, in a minute. I really like that. Again, these are these are um, probably peasant boys. Um, the black hat certainly signifies that. I think a rural a rural child um, and. Um, uh, the clothes, the one at the, in the foreground is, they're sort of almost Harlequin-esque to my eye. Um, they're kind of mischievous and a little clown-like and um, perhaps suggest that this is some kind of um, performance, a performance of childhood of mischievousness, some kind of transgression. Um, after all, climbing trees to pick apples, scrumping, as the title suggests, is something that we're not, is that we're not supposed to do. The apple is obviously a symbol of um, forbidden knowledge and experience. Presumably the boys have been um, held back from that somehow before, uh, before this point. Um, it's really bold and iconic um, uh, painting. It fascinates me that the tree is bare. There's not a leaf in sight, uh, let alone any apples, only the one that the boys got in his hand, but surely it didn't come from, uh, come from this tree. Um, in fact, the, the tree looks to be completely dead. So if this is some kind of um, childhood Eden, then the adults have certainly laid this garden uh, to waste. Perhaps, perhaps this tree is in some ways um, symbolic of Spain, of the country uh, in, uh, that the boys have inherited uh, after the decades of the First World War, uh, in the decades after the First World War, uh, sorry. Um, and uh, 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 perhaps these um, young scrumpers prefigure the sort of um, the revolutionary youth of the Spanish Civil War, which is about to come, a kind of uh, a reanimation of the of the country as um, Serti Badia um, might see it. Um, so it's it's hard to know um, uh, what he's uh, really uh, really at here. I mean, is this a is this a, a painting that says that youth is going to find fruit? It's going to find knowledge. It's going to find experience, even in the most barren of places. Um, is it about the fact that nature is going to regenerate itself on her own? Or maybe that the nation is in some kind of dormant, fruitless state, but it needs youth to make it fruitful again. Um, what, whatever it may be, I think there's a kind of delightful, airy breeziness about this, um, about this image that speaks of um, adventure and positivity. Um, and they seem to certainly seem to be able to find fruit in the most difficult and barren of places. There's a lot um, in the book about um, fairy tale. And um, this picture to me um, by Peter Doig painted, um, uh, sorry, just looking for my page, uh, painted uh, of his daughter, um, uh, fascinates me for its kind of fairy tale like um, qualities. Um, Doig sort of lives between uh, Edinburgh and uh, and the Caribbean um, and, and and Europe, where he teaches painting. Um, it's called Girl in White uh, with Trees, um, and it's it's a kind of magical realist image to my mind, uh, almost as though it was taken straight out of a child's fairy tale or a piece of folklore. This this girl is a is a child in the in the woods, uh, lost in these shadowy entangling forest trees. Uh, she's reminiscent of Little Red Riding Hood or Thumbelina or the many children who are in, found in trees in the fairy tales uh, of Grimm's fairy tales. Um, it's actually a painting um, of her of, of his daughter, uh, and it's paint it's painted from um, memory and from photographs. And he's done quite a few versions of this. It kind of captures the magical innocence of a child's uh, a child's dream. But it's also quite dark, I think. It's got the kind of darkness of fairy tales, uh, because of, partly because of its dark colours, but also because there's this sort of sublime painting of the Milky Way shining through the, um, through the branches at the top. Um, and uh, in that sense that um, Edmund Burke, the philosopher, described the sublime as being this kind of majestical, but also terrifying um, uh, sort of enormity. Uh, the, the Milky Way is kind of, um, is, is above her there and um, makes her presumably feel quite small in this entanglement. And I go, I, I go into this idea quite a bit in the book about the idea um, that, um, that very, very large things, 
like the Milky Way or, or large things like trees um, actually sort of take us outside of ourselves and they let us put human cares um, in, um, into, into perspective. Things that are up with us sort of start to fade away when we find ourselves having to deal with how do I get up this very big tree? And, and it's that sort of non-human, ultra-human, as Richard Jeffries, the, uh, the, the, the historic um, nature writer, wrote, um, this sort of sense of the ultra-human of something outside of us helping us put our, our, um, our cares and our worries into perspective, which is really common in tree climbing narratives. And perhaps it's what Cody Lee Miller was after when he climbed that huge sequoia tree in Seattle. Um, I also really like the fact that this um, painting is, it's, it's sort of, um, it's dreamlike in a, in a kind of, um, in a brain-like way. These, these branches to me look like, um, look like brain neurons and the, the sparks of light are like the flashes of inspiration, of imagination, of adventure and escape that are flitting through the child's mind um, while, she, uh, while she dreams at night. So I think there's a really interesting balance in this between kind of childish adventure um, and, um, and, and, and getting out and away and up, but, uh, but also the kind of um, that sort of uh, enclosing darkness of the forest, which is so uh, prevalent in very many fairy tales and folklore stories. Um, this is a much, uh, much brighter uh, painting. Um, by Hervan Anderson, and um, he's a, a British Jamaican um, painter. He's painted several pictures uh, that might be thought of as kind of family trees in some way. Um, they've got titles like cloning and this one rootstock, and they present um, images of the Jamaican children climbing in trees. He, he was in uh, Montego Bay and, and he saw some children climbing up in a mango tree. And he was reminded of him and his brother climbing trees back in Birmingham in the UK um, to scrump fruit, to steal fruit. And this, this, this uh, picture again is painted like the way it's painted from memory and from photographs. Um, and it blends the actual moment of, of, of this child climbing with sort of more nostalgic memories of childhood, I think. The colors are just beautifully uh, lively and tropical, although there's all, all this, this kind of gray in there as well to kind of set those colors off. Um, these blobs of fruit seem to sort of hang effortlessly in the tree and the boy seems very uh, effortless in his climbing as well, seems very happy up, that, up, those, up in those branches. He's unhurried in his fruit picking, I think. And if scrumping apples in England for uh, Anderson and his brother might have been a, a kind of urgent affair, um, needing to get the fruit before they got caught by the tree's owner, then this Jamaican child seems confidently unhurried about his um, picking. Uh, the tree is his own special domain. And I think this is something that we all have as if we climb trees, a kind of sense that this is my tree um, and one that I can go back to time and time again and feel kind of at home from home. Uh, I'm quite interested in this horizontal line which comes about a third of the way down the painting which sort of divides the picture. I don't know whether that's a window or whether it's photographic film or whether it's to suggest um, other kinds of binaries then and now, childhood and adulthood. Um, but it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a nice point of uh, interest for me in the, in the picture. Um, I'm interested also in the title Rootstock, um, because in the practice of grafting um, plants together, um, I'm sure you're aware that um, we, we take a, a new, a new um, a sap and we graft it onto a rootstock to create a new fruit tree, for example. Uh, a new apple tree would be grafted in that way. Um, and so um, perhaps Anderson is kind of talking about the grafting together of two cultures in his own in his own background um, uh, with this uh, with this memory. Um, and um, also rootstock, of course, is the part of the plant we refer to the bit which lives under the ground, the kind of the rootedness, the kind of of, of the earth, the finding uh, the being home kind of um, uh, metaphor 
Um, so I like both of those in relation to this picture. Another um, painting that I was um, very um, pleased to be able to include in the book um, is this one by Gavin Bands, uh, who's a painter who is exhibited in the Saatchi Gallery and so on, and now um, and lives in, in France. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's called Seeking to Rise into the Light, Man Climbing a Tree, and it takes its title from uh, Thus Spoke Zarathustra um, by Friedrich Nietzsche, um, the early 20th century um, philosopher, and um, in which uh, Nietzsche writes, uh, it is the same with man as with the tree. The more he seeks to rise into the light, the more vigorously do his roots struggle earthward, downward, into the dark, the deep. And um, I really like the way that this, um, that this picture kind of captures the noble urge um, of um, climbing up out of the darkness into the light. Uh, it is a, a, a metaphor for enlightenment and tree climbing uh, uh, time and time again is, is um, figured in this way as a way of, of leaving the, the, the darkness of the human realm and, and seeking to climb to enter a more kind of enlightened space. And in that sense, it's got some spiritual um, uh, connotations. Um, I really like um, the colors in this, the light airiness, the blues, the yellows in the, and, and the white sky. Um, but contrast that with the very, very heavy um, trunk, this very, very heavy trunk and this, and this sort of muscular young man who's um, got this very pur purposeful gaze looking up, up into the sky, again, up gazing, wondering what rises above him into the light. And um, something almost Christ-like about it, there's something a little bit crucifix-like as well, I think, this, the, the, um, the way that his body is arranged and the carrying of that, that giant piece of wood um, and, and so something a little bit of the kind of stations of the cross for me in this painting too. Um, and then that gaze becomes more sort of steadfastly pitched upon heaven and, and the metaphor starts to become a little bit um, more alive. Um, he, he, he writes a, um, uh, a statement for this for the Saatchi Gallery and he, he talks about, um, uh, about painting as submersing himself in art it silences the constant chatter of the mind. It allows you to enter a state of flow and being without any of the trappings or dis disturbances of modernity. As such, it's a necessity for myself personally to make a meaningful connection with the physical world as perceived by the senses, as well as the internal mind. And he's talking about painting there, but I think he could also equally just be talking about tree climbing, about how tree climbers often talk about the practice silencing the chatter of the mind. I think that's probably what Cody Lee Miller was after. Allowing you to enter into a state of flow and being, being in the here and now, like those boys in the Goya painting, without any of the disturbances or trappings of modernity, without any of the disturbances or trappings of adult worries and cares. Um, and I, I really like the way that um, Bands talks about painting, but for me, that could equally be a statement about climbing trees. Sometimes that this, um, this more spiritual enlightenment um, comes about because, because of drunken revelry. Um, people, people derange their senses, they, they, they get high, <laughs> um, not just by climbing, but by other means. And I was fascinated by this picture, um, the discovery of honey by Bacchus, by uh, Piero di Cosimo painted in 1497, uh, in which uh, the focal center of the painting stands this, this um, dead hollow tree. Again, it interests me that, um, well, maybe it's not quite dead, but it's, um, there's a few leaves on the top, but it's, it's not in great condition. Um, and these, all of these um, satyrs um, uh, and bacantes, the followers of Bacchus, also known as Dionysus, they're heading towards this and they're making a din there. They're banging pots and pans and playing instruments and banging uh, utensils um, to attract bees. This, this apparently attracts bees. And uh, they want to attract bees to uh, come and roost in the, to nest in the tree so that they will then make a hive and make honey. And then from that, uh, mead can be made, uh, an alcoholic 
drink. Um, from stage right uh, here enters um, Silenus seated on an, on an ass, on a donkey. Uh, he's a companion of Bacchus Dionysus. He leads the satyrs. There's this um, old satyr up in the top of the, um, of the tree. He's climbed up here and is banging the, um, the, uh, his, his tin pots. There's a, there's a small child. So we have old age and youth. Um, in the top of the tree. Uh, and then down here in the base of the tree, we also have a, a young satyr, um, almost baby-like. And this for me um, opens up the kind of uh, the womb-like qualities of the trees, of the tree um, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a baby um, almost um, being birthed from the tree. Um, and uh, trees are often referred to in, uh, in feminine or maternal terms. Uh, Susan Simard, who's written um, uh, uh, research on the mother tree um, in a wonderful book, um, uh, talks about um, the ways in which um, trees can detect their offspring and can um, channel nutrients through their underground roots um, and systems to, um, to their offspring, and that they can tell which saplings growing near them are theirs and which are not through um, through um, uh, chemical um, sensory um, uh, senses. So um, th there's a kind of an, a narrative around trees in which the maternal often figures. And I think this tree in the center here um, perhaps um, uh, symbolizes that. Uh, on the right hand side and is very, very uh, in the forest, um, there's, a, there's a, a naked man uh, climbing up a tree um, he's very small, but he's there on the right hand side. We've got these threatening storm clouds coming over the over those um, buildings and the big castles and edifices painted on the right hand side, which are over the forest. And I think the I think the man climbing here again is a symbol of enlightenment of of getting up and out of the woods, out of the forest, um, and becoming more enlightened, presumably. Uh, enlightened in the ways of um, Bacchus and Dionysus, uh, 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 enlightened in the ways of hedonistic reverie. This is a, pa a painting by a Polish painter called Hubert Bujak, who uh, is a painter and a sculptor. Um, he's got lots of work based on trees, um, lots of sculpt sculptures of dismembered tree trunks, and several canvases of people in trees or people becoming trees, um, and this one of a tree climber. Like, like so many tree climbers, um, Bujak's climber here is barefooted. And there's a lot of talk in, in, in tree climbing literature of being barefoot. Um, uh, I, I think it's a, a, a kind of um, a purity type of um, attitude, um, uh, but it's also easier. Um, uh, the resins um, stick to your feet, um, you are, it's easier to grip, um, your, foot, your toes are more sensorily attuned to the tree uh, if they're bare than if they, are, um, if they are clad in a boot. You can feel the weight, the give of a branch much more easily. So here we have a man who's chucked his shoes off and uh, uh, in his white shirt and jeans and is, um, is climbing this tree. He's quite a nondescript, nondescript sort of character, perhaps maybe just taking a walk in a park suddenly found himself looking up a tree uh, and gave into the call. Um, it's almost as if something up in that tree has called to him, like he's seen something up there in the canopy, or he's felt something inside himself, some, he's felt a call inside himself. His response here to me seems simple and unpremeditated. Um, I think that the simpleness of the colors and forms also echoes that idea. On the other hand, as you look at this, and sometimes when I look at it, he actually also looks quite slightly threatening. Um, the, the, the shaved head, the big limbs, the massive hand. Um, uh, he, he, he looks like he could be um, a, a dark character at times, and, uh, and perhaps on the right hand side it's darker and on the left it's lighter. Perhaps again we've got some of that kind of enlightenment stuff going on in the, uh, in the symbolism of this tree climb. Um, I like the way that the tree is so monolithic. Um, it's almost like um, it's got it's the active um, uh, subject of the of the painting as much as the man. They're almost um, 
uh, embracing each other. The tree is almost embracing the man. Um, or perhaps they're caught in a struggle. Perhaps this is a perhaps this is a painting about about struggle. Are they are they embracing? Are they resisting? It, it's it's slightly ambiguous. Um, there's something about the painting which reminds me of the expressionist paintings from Van Gogh onwards, um, dark outlines, um, simple colors, expressive um, use of paint. And as we know with um, Van Gogh and other expressionists, those paintings are particularly um, uh, reflective of internal states, um, particularly in Van Gogh, um, of inner feeling. Um, of emotiveness. And so there's something deeply um, expressive and wrought in um, Bujak's um, uh, portrayal of this, um, of this tree climber, I think. Something very different here. Um, look, there's lots of um, phrases in the English language to do with trees. Um, this one's called um, Up the Tree um, by Paula uh, Rigo. It's um, it's based uh, on a series of paintings that she did um, uh, uh, on uh, Jane Eyre, uh, on, the, on the novel Jane Eyre. And um, here, uh, Jane is not so much kind of climbing the tree, but sort of in and of the tree, floating um, in, the, in the tree. Um, and again, there's something slightly crucifix-like about the, about the arrangement of the branches. Uh, which is perhaps suggestive of the pain, the suffering, and also the redemption that Jane Eyre go, that, that Jane goes through in that novel. Um, there's something also fascinating about the just the sheer incongruity of these Victorian clothes, and I'm going to come on and talk about women's tree climbing and clothes um, in a, in, a, in a short while, um, but. Um, I mean, you can't climb trees um, dressed like that. I mean, I talked about being barefoot in the last painting. Look, look at these boots that are strapped onto these feet and these crinolines and um, undergarments. It's so restrictive. Um, everything about Victorian women, women's clothing is designed to say, thou shalt not climb, you stay on the ground. Um, and here, um, Jane is um, floating into the sky um, uh, uh, against that um, restriction. And so there's something transgressive about um, tree climbing, about, about overcoming such restrictions, particularly um, as women's tree climbing is presented. Um, uh, Rigo talks about Jane Eyre, Jane Eyre being a bit witch-like when she's wandering around on the moor. She kind of enters a kind of elemental um, uh, witch-like state, and uh, I think that that's kind of prevalent, uh, present here as well with, the, uh, uh, with Jane kind of floating around at night in the dark um, around this tree um, for what other women um, in folklore um, float around at night apart from witches. And um, so I think there's something positive in that sense of witchiness in, uh, in Rigo's um, uh, portrayal of putting Jane up the tree a kind of reclaiming a trans of, of of air and of space and of and of the arboreal canopy for women um, uh, as an act of um, transgression and sort of self-determination self-becoming I was talking with Neil a little bit beforehand um, he's worked with uh, Andy Goldsworthy and uh, these are some images from Andy Goldsworthy's uh, from the film made of uh, Andy Goldsworthy's work, um, uh, Leaning into the Wind. Um, and uh, so um, I'm just fascinated by these because um, they're so weird. And um, Goldsworthy says that you don't expect to see people in a tree. And, um, uh, and when you do, it's often very, very uncanny. And there's certainly something very, very uncanny about, about these pictures. Perhaps it explains why people were so disturbed to see Cody Lee Miller up a tree. You know, you just don't expect to see a man up a tree down in in a downtown city. Um, and uh, I, I love the uncanniness here in um, uh, in Goldsworthy's work. Um, I'm, I've realised I've been talking, so I'm just going to talk for about five more. I'm going to skip a few slides. Um, these are some um, tree climbing pictures about human folly from Peter Bruegel. Um, 
Uh, I just uh, wanted to talk about this. This is a painting of Jane Morris by Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Again, a bit like um, the Jane Eyre picture of Rego. Um, here, um, Jane Morris is Rossetti's muse. She was married to William Morris, but they were having a, a, an, a, an affair at the time, deeply in love. And this is a reverie of Rossetti's uh, where he paints Jane Morris up in the boughs of a sycamore tree um, in which she's in her own daydream, her own reverie. Sycamore trees are highly symbolic in the Bible. They're symbolic in the Book of the Dead uh, in, from Egypt. They were symbolic in medieval times. Lovers gave each other wooden spoons made from sycamore wood. Um, and I think these sort of sim symbolic meanings of the tree are not lost on Rossetti. You may know um, this wonderful book, um, uh, Women in Trees, um, and by uh, Jochen Reis. He collected postcards of women from the 1920s to the 1950s in Germany. He bought them in flea markets in Germany and made them into two books, Women in Trees. And um, uh, they're, they're just wonderfully strange, unusual pictures, um, celebratory pictures in which women reclaim um, the canopy as spaces. Um, sometimes they are um, fun, sometimes they're very fashionable, sometimes they're a bit awkward. Um, but wonderful, wonderful books. Um, there's really a biblical interdiction against women climbing trees ever since Eve picked the apple um, in the Garden of Eden. Um, Thou shalt not climb um, is, has, been, has been pretty much the interdiction for women. So um, I think uh, I will... Uh, uh, oh, and the last thing I'd just say, um, in, the, in the book I also talk about um, environmentalism and tree sitting, and this is... Um, Judy Heffernan's um, self-portrait as catastrophic failure, which is a, 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 a woman who's stripped away from those very restrictive clothings and is here a kind of steward of the environment um, with um, uh, trying to put out this burning city uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the canopy uh, uh, with a kind of floodplain behind her. Um, and um, this last picture, which is the last slide I'll show you, which is a, a photo I absolutely love, um, by the American uh, photographer Ryan McGinley, uh, who places this Rubens-esque lady um, in, in a tree um, uh, in the, with all the four colors behind her, um, completely stark as, I'm a woman, I'm naked, I'm up a tree, what are you gonna do about it? She seems to be saying. Um, and I think she's rediscovered that sense of childhood abandon and um, about turned that kind of act of kind of rebellious transgression into something really positive in this image. So I'm going to end with that for you there. Um, well, th thanks very much, Andy. Really wonderful set of images and slides um, and, and loads of uh, really interesting issues um, that we could we could we could talk about and discuss. But uh, I'm just wondering um, uh, if anyone uh, listening in has has got any questions if you'd like to paste them in the um in the q a uh panel um perhaps while we're waiting for people to have have a think um i can just ask andy a few questions andy um thanks ever so much for that i, I i'm i'm very well in your book that you you go into some detail um which you perhaps haven't talked so much about this evening um uh, in relation to the kind of uh health and well-being elements of trees and contact with trees you've touched on it i think but um uh, i just wondered if you could say more ab more about that uh, and and also um perhaps more in the context of the theme of the uh festival um this week you know the the, the importance of contact with, with trees in an urban in an urban setting or, or you know near urban settings and that last image you just showed i think quite neatly brings together the kind of the naturalistic and the and the kind of urban um, sort of dynamic. Yeah, that, that, I think that, that I mean, there's a mass of um, there's a there's a mass of, of scientific evidence, and I I I I I haven't really gone into it because I don't really want to bore people. Um, but um, uh, people people will probably be familiar with um, uh, Chinese and Japanese and Korean um, uh, practices of um, uh, forest bathing, Shinrin Yoku, as it's called, where um, walking amongst forest um, uh, 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 
um, uh, the aromatherapeutic benefits of, of breathing in the compounds which trees, um, which trees, trees particularly the um, uh, pine trees and conifers and the uh, evergreen trees produce, have very, very beneficial effects on, um, on stress hormones, um, um, uh, uh, on cortisol levels, um, uh, uh, and um, on adrenaline production. Um, there is a um, there's a lot of um, sort of scientific evidence about those compounds being very beneficial. Compounds which are in the soil, mycobacteria, um, extremely beneficial um, when they get underneath your fingernails if you climb trees. Um, when they, they when you breathe them in, they get in your they, if you scratch yourself, they get into your skin. These are supposedly very very beneficial, and some of them have um, in tests been proven to have. Um, uh, uh, you know, anti antimicrobial qualities, uh, even anti um, pathogenic and anti cancer um, uh, uh, um, type uh, uh, type of qualities. Um, trees clean air, obviously, they filter particles. And to, so to talk about trees in cities, um, the air underneath tree canopies is is I can't remember a figure. I don't want to pluck one out of the air. Significantly cleaner. Significantly cleaner to breathe in than it, than than um, than the air outside beyond a tree, um, and so obviously green planting schemes in in um, in um, cities are vitally important. But I think it's also to bring just to come to what you're talking there about the urban is that people don't have access to green space. You know, people. It's all very well to say yes, you know, tree climbing is going to make you better. Go and climb trees, but people don't have access to to green spaces. Um, maybe because of um, the uh, social background, maybe because of maybe because of um, uh, 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 money, maybe because of, maybe maybe because of um, uh, um, ethnic background and so on. You know, there's um, there are very different demographic uses of of green space by um, our different um, populations in in the UK, and so making making green space available to um, urban um, populations where there's a greater mix of people from different diverse backgrounds actually allows that countryside <laughs> effect to happen in, in town. Um, because it, it's a well-known fact, um, uh, a lot large percentages of um, the English countryside are exclusively white. Mm. Um, and, um, and our urban populations are much, much more diverse. Um, but those diverse communities don't come into the countryside very often. Therefore, green planting and um, tree schemes are absolutely vital to bring this so that everybody has equal access. Right. Yeah, I couldn't agree, agree more with that. Um, I, I'm also very conscious of, um, of, of your, you know, your references to childhood and tree climbing in childhood. And I think, you know, the, the kind of the concept of nature deficit disorder and the um, the relative lack of contact that children are able to have with with nature broadly, but but certainly with the potential to climb, you know, the opportunity to climb trees is, I think, a, a, a significant issue. Um, Absolutely, yeah, and, and lots of studies with children with ADHD who have um, uh, who have been shown to you know benefit enormously from you know green classroom, outdoor classroom type activities in which things like tree climbing are um, you know really foregrounded. So. Um, yeah, sitting in front of a computer screen is not going to do it for you. But um... I'm, I'm I'm reminded of, of um, I don't you know something that may be very sad actually in a way, um, and and this isn't meant meant to be a, a boast either. It's um, I was um, in Epping Forest with a, a couple of young grandchildren not so long ago, and I took to climb up a, 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 a one of the hornbeams there. Mm. Uh, beautiful old you know pollarded hornbeams up there, and my my youngest grandson. Um, was so petrified that I was going to fall. He was telling me, he was shouting up to me, "Granddad, Granddad, you're going to fall! Get down, get down!" <laughs> and it sort of it was quite a little kind of um, illustration of perhaps the attitude of you know, some of the younger generation to an activity that you know perhaps some of us took for granted, um, you know, not so long ago. Not maybe he was right, maybe I was um, being a bit foolish and um, in my relatively old age doing such a thing, but. Well, I came, I came across some interesting, um, you know, health and safety stuff. Um, so, for example, Wandsworth Council tried to ban children from climbing trees in the park because it was dangerous and antisocial. Um, and, and another council, I can't remember where, has also also tried to do this. Of course, there was 
uh, um, you know, uproar about it. And people said, you know, it's uh, it's health and safety gone mad. Um, and uh, there's um, some interesting statistics that I include in the book, like you're more likely to harm yourself falling out of bed than you are falling out of the branches of a tree. Um, more children are injured in the domestic space at home than they are outdoors. Um, and, and so, yeah, it's sort of, we, we've got things slightly the wrong way round. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, we've got um, an interesting, a couple of interesting questions here. What One from Eon, I think, um, I hope I'm right in pronouncing your name, Eon Joyce, um, asking what similarities and differences stand out for you in examining, in examining art and literature, I suppose, on this topic from different locations, I suspect, I mean, maybe from different cultures. I mean, you, you, you had some, you know, you had Polish references, you had references to Peter Doig, who's um, obviously sort of got particular experiences and I really like those images of his of his uh, tree climbing um, subjects but do, have you got any comments on that question any any anything that stands out for you in terms of an interesting question thank you uh, uh, Owen it's um I um the the book mainly focuses on um on European and North American um literature and art um so I, in some senses there's quite a bit of unity um in that um I came across a really wonderful um Book called Tree Girl, which is a um, for young adults, and Tree Girl is a story based around the Guatemalan Civil War. Um, it's pretty harrowing, um, and, and the thought that 14, 15 year olds would read this—I mean, it really disturbed me. Um, but it's a—it's a story. It's a—it's a—it's a, um, uh, it's a, um, a story about how tree climbing um, helps in a kind of post-traumatic stress um, scenario because the tree girl witnesses massacres and the loss of her entire family and all sorts of horrific um, uh, rape and murder and genocide and so on. So, uh, but tree climbing becomes a kind of, um, yeah, a post-traumatic uh, thing. And, um, and so that, that there's a more kind of, um, there are more in indigenous attitudes in, the, in that story about, um, about um, uh, tree climbing. Um, uh, and interestingly, um, there are some, there are some, um, some psych psychotherapeutic tools that people use. Um, a wonderful organization called NCUBE um, developed a, prog a program called the Tree of Life, um, which it helps in, um, it, uh, they've used with, um, uh, in South Africa with um, uh, uh, AIDS communities, for example, um, in which people draw trees and attach, attach certain sort of psychological um, expressions to certain to different parts of the tree so rootedness ambition and growth in the trunk um, shelter and fruits of your experiences and things you're good at in the branches and so on and these those that, that so that therapeutic work kind of came out of some some quite different cultural background and I, I found that very interesting Great, thanks. And, and another um, interesting one here from Barry saying, considering all the benefits that trees provide, why do you think recreational tree climbing is not more popular as a pastime? <laughs> and we've touched on this, I guess, in terms of health and safety and so on. But yeah, it's any... thank you, Barry. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, there are there are some there are lots of um, uh, there are lots of organisations. I mean, particularly in the states, um, uh, Tree Climbers International, uh, but also in there's some in Japan. Um, where um, where uh, 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 run by a chap called Gath Wright, I can't remember his first name, um, uh, uh, in which um, uh, tree climbing is 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 um, is, uh, is put on as a sort of recreational activity, so you take part in it. There are more of these now in the UK. Um, uh, interestingly, during the COVID lockdown, I was watching a BBC article about um, about one of these kind of companies in the UK. Uh, who take people out, but they use ropes and carabiners and 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 so on. So that's a more organised type of tree, tree climbing. I guess in the book I was more interested in I, what you would call a free climber, which is just like the man in Hubert Bujak's painting, someone who just gets the urge to climb a tree and up they go. Um, but there are, there's an increasing number of these of these organisations, Barry, um, who, um, who who will put on kind of tree climbing weekends for people and teach you to teach you to climb with ropes. Um, so um, uh, it's a, yeah, simple kind of Google search and you'll find them. I'm, a, I'm reminded of the, um, I don't know, I, I imagine it's still there, but the, the tree canopy walk at Kew Gardens. I don't know whether anyone here yeah. has been on that, but there is, I think it was introduced pre-COVID several years ago where you, know, you can actually walk through the tree canopy, but 
on a kind of a, a, a kind of secure pathway um, in a, a section of Kew Gardens, which I think is when I certainly when I visited a few years back it was very popular. Um, not so much tree climbing, but it gives you the experience of being up high within the trees. And uh, I'm just in, I would be interested to know whether you know that's still going and whether Kew Gardens uh, has a you know has a, any, any kind of experiences to report report about that i mean it also reminds me that there was a uh, there was a sadly a, a death as a result of a falling tree in, in Kew not so long ago so there's an interesting sort of health and safety dynamic going on there i, I think the the tree walk is quite the canopy tree walk is quite secure but it's interesting that you talk much. about about height there um um and what and this is something that interested me in the um in the um uh in the book is which is how high is high enough you know um because in in for example in rock climbing there's quite a there's quite a macho culture or there has been up up until recently of um of free climbing um you know um in yosemite park for example you know um the el capitan climbing a a, a free climbing a rock face that kind of leans backwards and is you know 300 meters tall and uh, um uh but in in tree climbing there's no need to kind of do that i mean how high do you have to go is it okay just to kind of get onto the first branch and just have your feet off the ground um i i i think it is i argue that that it that it is um and um uh and i also um also talk about kind of going into trees because you don't even sometimes need to climb a tree sometimes you may just find a hollow tree um and uh, i was I, I was past one the other day actually and just it was only the hollow was a meter off the ground and you know with a very easy climb i was inside the tree and this that then the whole kind of um, sort of uh, ideas of um, being subsumed by nature, of becoming one with nature, of becoming a tree, um, uh, uh, the, the kind of psychological benefits that that has, um, the, the, the idea that you're outside, but you're also inside, you're in an enclosed space, but you're not. Um, the, the, these are very sort of um, psychologically liberating things, but also you know, you're inside a hollow tree and it just smells wonderful and you're breathing in all of that, all of those compounds and you're breathing in uh, uh, scents and your, um, th those mycobacteria and things. And, you know, the, um, you, you, the, you feel good. <laughs> so you, yeah. don't, you don't necessarily have to go, you know, 80 meters up. Um, yeah. You can just take, a, just get both feet off the ground, just. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's the equivalent of, of, of bouldering compared to sort of rock climbing in, in the right, yeah. of, you're nice sort of horizontally traversing uh, as Andy Goldsworthy did in his hedge um, crawling kind of in, um, uh, experience. There's some yeah. very, very funny footage of him in Edinburgh crawling through um, an urban hedge um, yeah. and people walking up and down the pavements and the hedges are all shaking and, and mm -hmm. then suddenly a man kind of crawls out of the end of it and this sort of um, way that this sort of estranges the urban space and makes you feel a, feel um, different about the plants um, uh, and your relationship to them in the urban space is just wonderful in his work. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're running out of time. It's very interesting. We don't have any more questions in the Q and A panel, but there, there's just a, a, a one's just come in here from Barry. Another one. Uh, Sixty thousand rock climbers in the UK, approximately, but almost no recreational tree climbers. Um, Rope and carabiners are common to both mystery, really. Are people fearful of, of what? I mean, yeah, good, yeah I mean, good, Thank good you, point. Barry, yeah. um, I, one, of, one of the things that I found, and um, Barry, and the um, it's a shame we can't do it here, but when I do these talks in um, in person, is people and people immediately start talking about their tree climbing um experiences, how they still do it, how they only did it just the other day, or or in or they remember they remember doing it um as a child or in the not too distant past and um I, actually i'm finding that that there's quite a lot of people who like like the idea of it um and maybe there's it's i don't know maybe it's access maybe it's time and access more than fear um mm. good um i i've i'm just um typing i've accessed the, the chat bar the webinar chat bar which um i don't know whether you can find that on your screens but i'm just putting in um, a couple of references to future Urban Tree Festival events coming up tomorrow and Friday and, and, and over the weekend. There's also, as I think I said at the start, there's a tree fair going on in Sheffield on Saturday. 
I'm not sure if there's going to be much any tree climbing going on actually um, in, 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 in any of these activities. Um, but do have a look at the Urban Tree Festival programme if you haven't already. Um, uh, Andy, it's been fantastic. I mean, I don't know whether you you want to um, do a bit of a promo plug for your book because it is you, it's published by Bloomsbury, isn't it? It's available. Yes, it is. It's available um, in a ridiculously expensive hardback, which no one's going to buy unless you're a librarian. But it is available on um, uh, as as a paperback. Um, uh, that not all of the images I've shown are in it, but um, that um, the, there are paintings in it which I talk about. I also talk a lot about poetry and uh, and novels and films which have tree climbing in them and I go into uh, um, in a lot more detail um, the kind of the, the 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 nature cure side of this the well-being side of trees and, and why in fact they're just so positive for our for our physical and mental well-being so that's brilliant thanks yeah. I've taken the liberty of putting a link to the Bloomsbury the Bloomsbury website in the chat so if people want to copy that down it's fairly easy to locate um but i thoroughly recommend it i'm as i say, i'm look, really looking forward to having a bit of time to um immerse myself in in in, in it um, few weeks. But, um it's been fantastic um and unless there's any other questions or, or comments from people out there thank you andrea thanks barry for your engagement um it's now eight o'clock so I shall end the webinar and um, thank Andy once again for a really fascinating. Thank you, Neil. Really session. enjoyed myself, and thank you, thank you everybody for for your interest and for and for making time to come and listen. Much appreciated. Thank you, and and I should have said at the beginning. I hope people don't mind, but we have recorded um, the session, and it will be on the Urban Tree Festival YouTube channel in due course. So if you know of anyone that would be interested in listening in uh, in future um you can please point them in that direction thank you everyone and enjoy the rest of the evening yeah thank you bye-bye